Breakers by George Parsons Lathrop far out at sea there has been a storm, and still, as they roll their liquid acres, high heap the billows lower and glisten. The air is laden, moist, and warm with the dying tempest's breath. And as I walk the lonely strand with seaweed strewn, my forehead fanned by wet salt winds, I watch the breakers, furious. Sporting, tossed and tumbling, shatter here with a dreadful rumbling, watch, and muse, and vainly listen to the inarticulate mumbling of the hoary-headed deep. For who may tell me what it saith, muttering, moaning as in sleep? Slowly and heavily comes in the sea, with memories of storm o'erfreighted, with heaving heart and breath. Abated, pregnant with some mysterious, endless sorrow, and seamed with many a gaping, sighing furrow. Slowly and heavily grows the green water mound, but drawing ever nigher, towering ever higher, swollen with an inward rage not but ruin can assuage, swift, now, without sound, creeps stealthily up to the shore, creeps, creeps and undulates, as one dissimulates till, swayed by hateful frenzy, through passion grown immense, he bursts forth hostilely, and rising, a smooth billow, its swelling, sunlit dome thin to a tumid ledge with keen, curved edge like the scornful curl of lips that snarl, overtops itself and breaks into a raving foam, so springs upon the shore with a hungry roar, its first fierce anger slakes on the stony shallow, and runs up on the land, licking the smooth, hard sand, relentless, cold, yet wroth, and dies in savage froth. Then with its backward swirl the sands and the stones, how they whirl. Oh, fiercely doth it draw them to its chasmed maw, and against it in vain they linger and strain, and as they slip away into the seething gray fill all the thunderous air with the horror of their despair, and their wild terror reek in one hoarse, wailing shriek. But scarce is this done, when another one falls like the bolt from a bellowing gun, and sucks away. The shore is that did before, and another shall smother it o'er. Then there's a lull, a half hush, and forward the little waves rush, toppling and hurrying, each other worrying, and in their haste run to waste. Yet again is heard the trample of the surges high and ample, their dreadful meeting, the wild and sudden breaking, the dinting, and battering, and beating, and swift forsaking. And ever they burst and boom, a numberless host like heralds of doom to the trembling coast, and ever the tangled spray is tossed from the fierce affray, and, as with spectral arms that taunt and beckon and mock, and scatter vague alarms, clasps and unclasps the rock, listlessly over it wanders, moodily, madly mounders, and hissingly falls from the glistening walls. So all day along the shore shout the breakers, green and hoar, weaving out their weird tune, till at night the full moon weds the dark with that ring of gold that you see her fling on the misty air. Then, homeward slow returning to slumber's deep eye fair, filled with an infinite yearning, with thoughts that rise and fall to the sound of the sea's hollow call, breathed now from white-lit waves that reach cold fingers o'er the damp, dark beach, to scatter a spray on my dreams, till the slow and measured rote brings a drowsy ease to my spirit and seems to set it soothingly afloat on broad and buoyant seas of endless rest, lulled by the dirge of the melancholy surge.